Michaela noticed that when she was younger, her mother was happy and showed her all the love in the world. Then, out of nowhere, her mother turned cruel and yelled at her constantly, even going so far as beating her when she did nothing wrong. Michaela's mother eventually met Michaela's stepfather, and they got married shortly after that. When Howie was born, she was cast aside and belittled by both her parents. Howie got all the love and attention he could ever want, while Michaela locked herself away in her room and began to hate her family. Michaela's mother had tears streaming down her face when she told them about her past. Michaela looked at Harry, her eyes full of grievance. Seventeen long years and they had finally met. She was happy to see that she had an older brother that actually cared about her. Michaela's mother had sacrificed her own life for an unreachable dream. Harry pitied her somewhat. Ignoring the anger he felt for abusing his sister, he could see that she was just a pathetic woman. But that wouldn't absolve her from taking out her frustrations on her daughter. After all, Michaela was innocent. Michaela's mother chose to get pregnant so that she could marry a rich man. She had to take responsibility for Michaela. Harry felt sorry for his sister. If his father knew that he had gotten Michaela's mother pregnant, he wouldn't have left them to fend for themselves. He would have brought them to his family and they would have lived a comfortable life. Had he figured out that Michaela's mother was only using him for her own personal gain, he would have taken Michaela and not her mother. Wealthy families were cruel and heartless when it came to such matters. The truth had finally come out. No one doubted that Harry and Michaela were related. Harry had come for Michaela. He wanted to take her away from her horrible life with a mother that resented her and a stepfather that saw her as nothing more than a prize to be sold off. When they all calmed down from questioning Harry and Michaela's mother, Michaela felt her heart ache. She couldn't help herself. She was overjoyed that she had an older brother. As for her mother, she felt a wave of conflicting emotions. Michaela hated her mother for treating her so poorly and pitied her for losing her dreams to a series of unfortunate events. She had waited for 17 years to tell the truth, all while resenting her own daughter. Michaela's mother was confused for a long time before she suddenly became excited. Is your father coming to pick me up? Harry could only find this kind of question funny. Sorry, I'm only here to pick up Michaela. As for my father, he passed away many years ago. Harry had dashed her hopes with a single sentence. He didn't feel pity telling her that his father was gone. He knew she only wanted to use him like she had planned to do 17 years ago. Harry had no love for Michaela's mother. She was nothing to him. He'd be happy to leave her to rot in the life she had built for herself. She spoke in a whispered tone. How did he die? No wonder he didn't come to find me. What are you going to do with us? Michaela's mother began to cry when she heard that Harry's father had died. Harry knew these tears were fake and wouldn't let them sway his emotions. Harry knew that she was sadder to hear that Harry's father forgot about her than that he had died. He said bluntly, Stop acting. He died years ago. Besides, you're married now. You're no longer mine or Michaela's problem. You can't say that. I took care of Michaela by myself for years. You can't separate us, can you? Michaela's mother began to worry. Michaela's stepfather was angry. The moment he saw his wife asking for another man and to be taken away, he frowned. He was angry that Harry and his family had abandoned Michaela's mother. He was unaware that she would drop him in a second if it meant she could live a life of luxury. He said, that's right. My wife has been through so much hardship. Your family abandoned her. Harry understood what they meant. He sneered and said, If you have something to say, just say it. You owe us for taking care of Michaela, he said. Yeah, it was so hard taking care of her. She cost me a lot of money, Michaela's mother said. Harry thought to himself that they were really a perfect couple. They were only focused on money. Howie laid on the windowsill and looked at Harry's luxurious motorcade downstairs and then at the group of men in black suits. Only now did he understand that they were all Harry's guards. Muller didn't have nearly as many men, nor were they as well equipped. Howie figured that Harry was even more rich than Muller. He started to plan a scheme. He would use his relationship with Michaela to squeeze out some money from Harry. He figured that his plan would work because Harry was his older stepbrother. Howie became excited. He no longer looked at Harry with disgust. Howie was no longer willing to listen to his parents talk about money. He thought that if he played his cards right, Harry would take him with Michaela. Then he could join Harry's family and be rich and powerful beyond his wildest dreams. Howie rushed over and fell to his knees and slid in front of Harry. He hugged Harry's thigh and began to plead. I'm so glad to have such a wonderful brother. You've come for me and my sister. You're going to take us away from our horrible parents. 
Everyone was stunned when they saw Howie groveling. Harry didn't expect this kid to come to such an unexpected place. He didn't have the time to react and was also stunned. I'm not your brother, let go of me, Harry said angrily. Howie was stubborn. Don't be so mean to me. You said it yourself, you're Michaela's brother and I'm Michaela's brother. That means we're brothers. Michaela walked up to Howie unhappily and pulled him off Harry. What's wrong with you? Howie refused to let go. Nothing is wrong, I just love my brother so much, Michaela's mother scolded Howie. Nonsense, what are you messing around for? Go back to your room. Mom, I'm doing this for the family. When I'm rich, I'll take good care of you. Harry couldn't stand it any longer. He lifted his leg and threw Howie away. He said mockingly, You think I want you to come with us? Get real. No, you can't do this to me. I'm your younger brother. Harry sneered. Sorry, we're not related. I don't want to have a brother like you. Michaela's mother didn't want to be humiliated. She said angrily, Go to your room, you're an embarrassment. You all bully me. Howie started to cry. He wiped his tears and ran into his room. No one was fooled by his act. They know he didn't care about Harry or Michaela. He just wanted money. Howie's parents were realists. They understood that Harry wouldn't want Howie anywhere near him. They thought they had a better chance for fame and fortune than Howie. Even if all they got was a sum of money for raising Michaela, they'd be happy. Harry, ignore him. He's a child. He doesn't know what he's doing. Don't take it to heart. Let's continue to talk about the money you owe us. Howie's father said with a worried face. Muller came to his senses and joined the conversation. He had been in shock, thinking that Michaela and Harry were a couple, and he would have to fight for Michaela's love. But after listening to the whole story, he realized that Michaela could still be his bride. He'd only have to pay Harry instead. He was happy to not deal with Michaela's parents and younger brother ever again. He figured that Harry would accept his proposal because he knew how rich families operated. They would marry each other and form alliances. Muller would marry Michaela, bringing his family into Harry's family. A marriage between two powerful families was the best way to form an alliance. Muller didn't care that Michaela had a different mother than Harry. He would be happy enough to be part of Harry's family. These thoughts flashed through his mind as Muller slammed the table and stood up. He had to act. Muller leaped into the air, hugged Harry's thigh and started shouting. Oh, Harry, I wasn't thinking and said some outrageous things. Now I know that I was wrong, please forgive me. Harry was stunned. Are you crazy too? Let go of me. Who are you apologizing to? Harry said helplessly. Muller did not give up. You are my brother-in-law. Michaela is my fiance, you are her brother, so that makes you my brother-in-law. Before the others could react, Michaela was the first to get angry. She angrily rebuked, I never agreed to marry you. Michaela, don't be like this. I know this marriage arrangement was quite sudden. It's understandable that you can't accept it at the moment, but please believe me, I'll make you the happiest woman in the world," Muller said with a sincere expression. Michaela sneered. I'll never marry a man like you. Uh, Muller was speechless. At this time, Harry added, you won't have to marry a man like him while I'm around. Michaela had finally met her real family. She would be safe from her greedy parents. Harry knew he would have to file paperwork to change Michaela's last name and make everything official. He was going to force Michaela to change her name if he had to. He wanted everyone to know that they were siblings and to respect her as such. It was a form of address. The Parker name carried a lot of influence, and he wanted Michaela to enjoy that kind of power. Even if their family didn't accept Michaela into their family, he would make sure that she lived her best life. However, Harry had to think for Michaela's sake. The Parker family was massive. Changing her name also kept some of his relatives from ostracizing him and Michaela. However, it was still a little early to discuss this matter. Harry would discuss it in detail with Michaela later. If she was unwilling to change her name, Harry would respect her decision. Muller didn't stand a chance against Harry. He would have to retract his marriage proposal or face serious consequences. Michaela's family did not care about Muller's betrothal money anymore. They knew Harry was much richer and they could probably get more money out of him instead. Michaela's mother thought it'd be best if Muller left. Well, Muller, our family just learned about some wonderful news. I'm sorry, but you have to leave while we sort this out. I think we should talk about your proposal another day. When Muller heard this, he became angry. What do you mean? You already agreed you can't go back on your word now. Michaela heard this and frowned. She wanted to kick Muller out herself, but Harry pulled her back. Don't waste your energy. Someone come kick this person out. Harry would send his men to deal with Muller. He hated looking at him when he was groveling. Muller was picked by Harry's guards and tossed into the dirt. 
Muller finally knew that Harry was a very powerful man. He thought that he would need ten of his own bodyguards for each one of Harry's men. Muller was beyond angry at being treated like garbage, but he didn't dare show it in front of Harry. He needed to be respectful in front of him if he ever wanted his marriage proposal to be accepted. Muller didn't dare to stay here any longer, so he got in his car and drove home. The multiple expensive cars and men crowding Michaela's home had attracted the attention of the whole neighborhood. Everyone was scared of the wolf guard, so they didn't get too close. They had no desire to get mixed up in whatever was happening. Nevertheless, they stood on their balconies and across the street watching and waiting for something to happen. Everyone had been out on their daily chores and noticed the cars. Once they put everything away, they came out to stand with the crowd. A few people had been wandering closer to the house. When everyone else saw that they weren't being told to leave, the larger crowd walked closer. The crowd had surrounded the building. The older people in the crowd began to gossip and wild stories could be heard. Like a game of telephone, information got passed around and misunderstood a dozen times. No one actually knew what was going on. A quiet neighborhood like this one rarely had anything noteworthy to talk about. Now that they were watching some family drama unfold, they would be able to talk about it for weeks. More people came from down the street and joined the crowd. Harry was unaware of the large crow forming outside. He was currently looking coldly at Michaela's family. You realize, I owe you nothing. I'm going to take Michaela away, you can't stop me. Harry knew Michaela wanted out of this house and would be willing to go with Harry. He didn't need to worry about her parents and their greed. Michaela's mother and stepfather did not agree. They were only interested in money. All Harry had to do was to just give them a large amount of money and they'd let Michaela go. Harry wasn't interested in bargaining with her parents. If he wanted to take Michaela away, no one could stop him. But on this matter, Harry still had some patience. Harry hadn't fully lost his temper. He was still willing to hear the amount they wanted for Michaela. When they told him that they wanted $100 million, Harry almost couldn't help but laugh. He didn't laugh because he couldn't pay them. He laughed because he thought it was such an absurd amount when he could just take her away for free. Michaela was Harry's younger sister. He had no reason to give them any money at all. They saw this as their last opportunity to make their lives tolerable. They were horribly greedy and didn't want their one chance at fortune to be taken away for free. Harry naturally wouldn't agree to this kind of insatiable amount. He rejected it without any room for negotiation. However, after arguing with her family, Harry realized that he never asked Michaela if she wanted to leave. He gently asked, Michaela, are you willing to come home with me? You can do whatever you want when you live with me. You won't even have to work if you don't want to. Michaela did not hesitate at all. Take me away. I don't want to spend another second in this house. Harry was overjoyed. He originally thought that Michaela would not be willing to leave. She made such a big decision of her life without any hesitation. He turned around and said to her mother, You heard her. Michaela has already made up her mind. So put away your disgusting greed. If you still love her, you should be happy for her. Michaela's stepfather dropped the act and showed Harry his true emotions. He said, We can't stop Michaela from leaving with you, but she is only 17. You can't legally take her. Harry looked at him with pity and laughed. You are so ignorant. That means nothing to me. What? What do you mean? Michaela's stepfather asked in shock. Harry sneered. I could easily pay off a few people and have her name changed, and then I'd be her legal guardian. Doesn't matter if you don't like it. I don't need you or her mother to agree. No, it's impossible. You must be lying to me. She can't just run away. The cops would come after her, and you'd be a criminal. Michaela's stepfather still did not want to believe Harry had the power to steal his stepdaughter. Harry shook his head. He did not want to explain, nor did he have the obligation to do so. He only said with a calm tone, Money and power. Once you have it, you can do whatever you want. After hearing Harry's words, Michaela's stepfather's face turned pale. He staggered a few steps back and collapsed to the ground. He was out of his league and didn't know what else he could do. Had they been kind to Michaela and treated her with respect, they might have gotten more money than they could ever spend. Instead, they used their hatred and vitriol for their own actions against Michaela. They ruined their chances at a comfortable life because of their greed. Harry didn't want to be entangled with this family anymore. He didn't want to watch Michaela suffer any longer. He would make sure that they'd learn a harsh lesson for abusing his sister for their own personal greed. Michaela, let's leave now. What do you think? Harry asked. Michaela nodded obediently. Lead the way. Okay, is there anything else you need to pack? Michaela looked back at every corner of the house and finally became lost. Other than a few photos and books for school, 
There's nothing else. Michaela hated living in this house. Her parents never did anything nice for her, so she had nothing with any sentimental value in this house. Even looking at her own mother with tears in her eyes wouldn't sway her decision. She had long hated her for all the abuse she received. Since she was young, her mother did not give her much love, and Michaela did not expect to live a happy life like the children of other families. That was why she worked hard to do good in school, so she could move out as soon as possible. She needed to get into a good university. Once she did that, she would never come back. Michaela, are you really going to leave? Do you really have the heart to leave your mother? Michaela said with an expressionless face. Yes, now that I know I have a family that actually loves me, I won't have to put up with you anymore. Her mother found it hard to accept and immediately began to feel pain. She didn't know whether it was because she really did not want Michaela to leave or because she felt sorry that she wasn't going to get the money she desperately wanted. Harry asked June to help Michaela pack her luggage. Harry looked at Michaela's shabby clothes and felt sorry for her. He said to her mother, Now you are crying. She is your daughter and all you could ever do was blame her for your own mistakes. If I were a different man, I'd have you killed. Forget it. Don't say any more, brother. Let's go. Michaela didn't want to cause any more trouble. She wanted to leave her disgusting family behind. She had no intention of seeing them ever again. The sooner they left, the happier she would be. Harry brought Michaela out of the house and across the street to the one he had rented for the year. Harry did not want to go in. There wasn't anything inside that he wanted to pack and take with him. After going down the corridor, Harry said to Michaela, Actually, I can't just take you away. Although they did not treat you well, they kept you fed and had a roof over your head. Michaela did not mind and said, Do whatever you think is best. June, take two million in cash and send it over. That's all I'll give them, Harry instructed. Yes, sir. June nodded. She took out a suitcase from the car and went upstairs. He knew they'd be overjoyed with that amount, and they'd probably spend it all in no time. He felt disgusted giving them so much, but it was the least he could do. The crowd was gossiping even more, trying to guess what was in the suitcase. Harry and Michaela were surrounded by guards, which made them look like celebrities to the crowd. Harry couldn't help but listen to the gossip of the crowd. He immediately shouted, You're all wrong. I'm Michaela's long-lost brother. Now that I've found her... I want to bring her home. After Harry explained himself, he continued walking with Michaela. After taking his sister into the car, the guards dispersed the crowd that was watching the show and left. A few of the crowd wanted to go up to Michaela's house and ask what had happened. The crowd wouldn't be satisfied until they heard the whole story. In Harry's car, Michaela recovered from the excitement of finally leaving her family and asked with some confusion, Harry, where are we going? Home? I don't even know where your home is. Harry smiled and said, You'll see soon enough. First, I need to get you caught up on the family that our father was in. The Parker family. Harry explained to Michaela the long history of their family and how they had grown their influence far and wide. The general public didn't even know that such a powerful family controlled most of the wealth in the world. They were a family that valued their privacy and only let the top 1% of the 1% know that they even existed. Harry was one of the many heirs of their family. Michaela listened to everything that Harry told her and was so shocked that her small mouth was wide open and she couldn't close it for a long time. She really did not expect that her father was such a rich and powerful man. She wished she could have met him before he died. She thought to herself, no wonder my mother couldn't find out where my father is. Harry looked at Michaela in silence. After a while, he could not help but ask, Michaela, did you ever blame your father? Michaela was puzzled. Why'd you say that? I'd hate him for abandoning me and my mother. Harry sighed faintly. Harry didn't know how he'd feel if his father abandoned him. He was worried that Michaela would hold a grudge against him. He could imagine a girl like her hating her father for the simple reason that her mother had abused her for years because she had wasted her life waiting for Harry's father. Any kid would grow up thinking their parents hated them. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been absent in her life for 17 years. Michaela listened to Harry's inquiry and lowered her head. After thinking for a while, she said sadly, I do hate him. Harry sighed again. This was just as he had expected. Michaela could not help but hate her father. Harry could excuse it because he knew his father before he passed. He was confident that he'd come for Michaela had he known she was his daughter. Unfortunately, Harry's father never knew about Michaela and had died not knowing she ever existed. Had he been alive, the shock would have made him go crazy. 
He'd stop at nothing to make sure his daughter was safe and got everything she ever wanted. Now it was fortunate that Harry could make up for it on behalf of his father. When I was young, I often asked my mother who my dad was, where he was, but my mother never answered. Every time I asked this question, she would hit me. Michaela recalled her past memories and said, Harry nodded. Michaela smiled bitterly and said, Later on, I didn't ask anymore. I planned on looking for myself. I heard that if I went for a gene test, I might be able to find a match. So, Harry finally understood why her DNA test ended up in their system. Michaela wanted to find her father. After the DNA test, she would be able to use her results and compare it to anyone the hospital had on file. However, the possibility of a match was incredibly small. Had June and his doctors not done such a thorough test, they'd never know that Michaela existed. Harry smiled bitterly and explained to Michaela, You must be wondering why I disguised myself to get close to you. Michaela nodded. She thought it made more sense to just tell her the truth from the beginning. After that, Michaela asked puzzledly, were you afraid that I'd try to steal some kind of inheritance from you? Harry shook his head. Yes. Our father left me a lot in his will. Since he never knew you were born, he didn't leave anything in the will for you. I'm certain he would have left you some money if you met before he died. Seems only right I give you your share of the inheritance. Then, Michaela completely did not understand. Harry smiled. It's confusing, I know, trust me. We'll get everything sorted out in no time. Let's change the subject. Harry didn't want to ruin his good mood by talking about his family. All right, then where are we going now? Michaela asked. Harry asked, that depends on your thoughts. Do you want to go to where I live now or to our family? Michaela thought for a moment and said, can we stay here for a while longer? The unexpected answer stunned Harry. You still want to stay here? Michaela shook her head and said, no, I really want to leave, just not yet. I have to finish college entrance exams before I leave. Harry heaved a sigh of relief. He waved his hand and said, To be honest, you don't have to take it. Our name carries a lot of weight. I can get you into any college you want. Any university would be overjoyed to have her as one of their students. This was an unspoken rule among the rich and powerful. All their kids could get into any school, for the right price. While everyone else had to study hard and hope they scored high enough on the exam to get into the university, Michaela thought she'd have to study every day and most nights just to get a chance at going to a good school. She'd never imagined it'd be so easy to get in if she was rich. However, Harry was surprised to find that Michaela did not even consider the path he had given her. I appreciate the idea that you'd get me into any university, but I want to get in on my own merit. Michaela looked at Harry apologetically. Uh, why? With me paving the way for you, why do you still want to take the exam? Harry asked. Michaela smiled. No, I just feel that after studying hard for so many years, I'd be second guessing if I belonged at the college. Harry understood and said, that makes sense to me. You're agreeing with me? Michaela was surprised. Harry was very happy. Of course, you're my sister. As long as you make a decision, I will support you unconditionally. Even if you want the moon, I'll buy it for you. Michaela said in surprise. Really? Harry nodded seriously and said, it's absolutely true. Michaela was really shocked this time. How rich are you? Can you buy the moon? Harry burst into laughter. He felt that his sister was a little naive and cute. I don't have much money right now, but in the future, I'll have more than I know what to do with. I could buy the whole world for you. Hearing Harry's bold words, Michaela's heart was filled with happiness. Of course, she knew that he was only joking right now. She just wanted to enjoy the feeling of being pampered by her brother. However, what she didn't know was that what Harry said was true. When the industries that he had set up started to have an impact on the world, at that time, the wealth that Harry had accumulated would be enough to control the entire world. Perhaps in Michaela's opinion, the Parker family described by Harry was unimaginably huge. Harry no longer cared about the wealth of his family. The Parker family was big now, but Harry didn't want to rely on their wealth. No power could thrive forever. All empires of the world had fallen eventually. The Parker family had been at the top for over a hundred years. Harry could see that the family was losing their position slowly, but surely. As the family had been reproducing for a long time, there were already hundreds of thousands of direct family members and millions of collateral family members. The Parker family had a large lineage. Eventually, people would get greedy and try and take it any way they could. As every house wanted to control the power of the family, it caused the competition for power to become more and more scheming and even more bloody. People's hearts were always occupied by greed, and they would always be filled with dissatisfaction.